Hi, how's it going? I dyed my hair because um, I wanted to cosplay Kasumi from Persona 5 and I did it. I'm wearing it right now. The con took place yesterday, so it was really fun. First time cosplaying. Three people recognized me as in my cosplay. They were like, Persona 5, yeah! I'm like, yeah! And somebody, somebody actually recognized me from YouTube. That was weird. They said, oh, I love your cos cosplay. I'm like, thank you. And then they're like, are you the girl from YouTube? I'm like, what do you mean? Like the, the girl with the 3DS video. I'm like, wait, you watch that? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, for real? Yeah, for real? I didn't believe them at first. Like, it's so weird. Um, I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, here's some pictures of my cosplay. Or like one picture. I don't know how many I have. I, I even got the ribbon. It's right here. So, it was fun. The, this con was a bit smaller than the ones that I've been to before. It was all just like in a in a gym at a school, but it was it was still really fun. I I think it might have been my favorite so far, but that's probably because of what I got. There was a Mario Kart tournament that I forgot to sign up for, so maybe next time. I helped a friend at her booth. She had an artist booth, so that was really cool. I had fun doing that, uh, cutting out stickers. I'm taking that off. <laughs> Stop. I have to complain though. I bought my 3DS with me. Not a single street pass. The convention was for anime, cosplay, gaming. Gaming? Not a single street pass. That made me very sad. But they did have a gaming section, like they had uh, all the NES, SNES classics. So I played a little bit of Kirby, one of the old ones. That was fun. And there was also, as I said, Mario Kart tournament. Like there were a bunch of PlayStations there and old consoles and you could just play them. I was too impatient to wait my turn for Super Mario World, but I can just play that at home, let's be real. I also listened to a panel about, what was it called? Spider Lily? Picture. It's a pretty flower. Um, Let me show you what I got. I got this little Mario <laughs> mushroom. I wanted to say one up, but it's not a one up mushroom. It's a it's a mushroom. The mushroom that makes you be big. Then I got some stickers. I got this one. My name is not Zelda. So true. I had to get that one. Then I got this little sticker that a goose and it says honk. Once again, I could not resist. I just had to get it. I, I got two stickers, holographic, a Pikachu with a cappuccino and a Clefairy with a coffee and their little puns, Pikachino <laughs> and Coffee Fairy. They're really cute. I don't I don't know where I'll put them, but I'll find a place. And also, as usually, you have to get Pokemon cards at a con. You just cannot not go with Pokemon cards. I wanted to get the new set, but they told me the new set is not even out yet. That's a fail on my part, but they told me next con, which is in May, that I'm going to, they'll have the new pack. I already forgot its name. The one after Temporal Forces. It has a long name. I don't know. I don't remember it, but I get at least one pack of each release of Pokemon cards. Um, This is an old one, though. I lost origin. It was on sale because it's old. That's why I got it. <laughs> Otherwise I wouldn't because I already have a bunch of lost origin cards. Is this the pack with that Volo full art or is that Astral Radiance? I don't know, but I have a super cool Volo card. Yeah, nothing exciting in here because my luck with Pokemon cards at conventions is bad. And the most exciting part about this con was they had two gaming stands that were selling video games. There was one that sold like consoles. They had they had a Wii in the box and they had a Wii U, DS, DSi, all the Game Boys. And they had some old Game Boy Pokemon games, but I think they were Italian because the con took place at the coast next to Italy. So I didn't buy any. They had a Zelda, they had a fake Zelda game and I was really pleasantly surprised and happy that they were clear about it being fake. <laughs> And then there was another table selling games that was more like you can I'm here at my table and you can like give me your stuff and I'll sell them on your behalf. So somebody came to that convention with a bunch of games that were really cool and they were like I don't feel like gaming again ever. So I'm selling my games. So there was a box on the floor and I'm like let me look at it. Why not? And they had a bunch of Wii and GameCube games. And the first one that I saw was in a beautiful golden box. Now, if you remember last video where I talked about retro gaming stores being expensive, I showed Zelda The Wind Waker limited edition for like 150 euros. And I was like, that's insane. Well, this one was 50 at the convention. Complete in box manual everything and it works the dude there was like um since they're not my games i can't guarantee they work but i took the risk and they work there there's like barely any scratches on the discs it was a normal amount of scratches so i got it i didn't even think about it i was like 
mine. And I tested them, the Wind Waker works beautifully. The only problem is the limited edition bonus disc that has Ocarina of Time on it is 60 hertz only. It says right here, 60 hertz only. And if you know anything about PAL regions, the old TVs were 50 hertz, which isn't a problem. I can still play that on my TV. I can't play it on my monitor though, because I have a AV to HDMI converter, which I use for my Wii, and it only works on 50 hertz, because as soon as it recognizes 60 hertz, it suddenly thinks that it's an NTSC signal, and then it gets confused, and then this, the game on my screen is like green flickery, um, I would show it to you, but it would be an epilepsy warning. Oh my god, what is that? So now I either play this in the living room, whenever nobody's watching the TV, or I have to find like a proper AV to HDMI converter that supports PAL 60 Hertz. But I'll deal with that later. The only thing that matters right now is both the discs in here work. I didn't waste my money. <laughs> so it's a really cool find. I wasn't even planning on buying this anytime soon. Just the, the regular version, not the limited edition. It just happened to be there and I guess, I guess the universe was like, um, yeah, the, the thing that you saw in Vienna, that's a scam. So I'm gonna bless you with this. And then, then I found another one. We have a bunch of black and white boxes of Wii and GameCube games. The gold one stands out and there was a silver one that stood out and at first I was like, that's a PlayStation 2 Essentials. And I, I'm not interested in that, whatever it is. But I still looked at it just in case. It's Mario Sunshine. Guys, my GameCube collection isn't sad anymore. I have three games now. Three games. Actually five, but two of them are like... Guess how much this one was? It was only 20 euros. So when I bought this one, I was like, how much is that? And he's like, um, 20. I'm like, okay, I'm out of cash. So I'll come back in a few when I go to the ATM across the street. In the end, I forced my brother to go because I didn't want to go outside because it was a bit windy and his clothes were warmer than mine. But I, I got Super Mario Sunshine for 20 euros. French copy, that's fun. I was about to read Player's Choice in French, but I... I don't really want to mispronounce anything. No manual for this one, but for 20 euros, we can't complain. The game works. I mean, I already played it on the Switch, but I love the GameCube controller, so I kind of want to play it again just for that. So thanks again to the dude that decided to stop gaming. I feel sad for you, but um, happy for me. They were also selling Disney Epic Mickey and the sequel for the Wii. And I was like, do I? I've been wanting that game since I was 10. Do I? It's probably like five euros. I didn't even check. Maybe I should have, but I didn't get it because the remake is coming out for the PS5 and the other consoles, but I'll, I'll get it on the PS5. So I, I didn't because I'm gonna get it anyway, like the HD version. So I'm still sad about the no street pass. I had this thing on. She was working overtime, being turned on, on sleep mode, and I didn't get a single street pass. Very, very sad. Especially the first time I took a 3DS to a con, I got the Eon ticket in Omega Ruby. And then I lost it. And then at the next con in December, I got it again. Don't forget to save your games, friends. Don't forget to save your games. Yeah, I think that's all for today. That's all I got to show you. Unless you want to see my GameCube controller. This is my GameCube bag controller and memory card somewhere in there. Now you can't see because of the super ultra long cable, but it's the Smash Bros edition from 2020, 2018, 2018. That was released for Smash Ultimate. Usually I wouldn't have got it because I didn't care what controller I have, but because the GameCube controllers on eBay at the time were like 20, 40 euros and this was 40 euros brand new. So I just got that. Why not? Longer cable, brand new, no sweat when you get a controller and it's just so grimy and slimy. Disgusting! Ew. Oh, somebody also gave me a cat sticker as a freebie. Meow. I also brought my Pokemon Emerald copy with me because I was hoping the, the guy who switches out batteries would be there, but he wasn't. So maybe in a month. He has to be there because I need a new battery, please. But I think that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed my little haul. Hope you like my new hair. I love it. I still can't believe I got recognized in real life. That was, it was a weird experience. Not an unwelcome experience, but it was different and new and not expected. But if you're watching, hi. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Have you ever been to a con? I can't wait to get a car so I can go like outside of the country. There's some really nice cons in Austria and Croatia. Actually, there's one next weekend, but I can't go. So I'm gonna go play Persona 5 now. Bye. Bye.